Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the New Horizons mission that just passed by this beautiful object known as Ultima Thule. Now, in this video I wanted to actually focus on things that you may have not known about this particular mission and also give you some of the updates um, that occurred in the last few months or so and specifically talk about what we've actually discovered and what this means to us as a species of human beings. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So this is what the image from New Horizons looks like. This is um, actually about 28 minutes before the closest approach at around 3000 something kilometers. And essentially we now know that uh, Ultima Thule has two parts. Uh, there is the Ultima part, and then there is the Thule part. Uh, interestingly, uh, this is actually kind of what we expected to find, and this is um, why this particular mission actually helped us understand the creation of the solar system even better. So what you see here is two planetesimals. This is the larger planetesimal, this is the smaller one, right as they sort of combine um, with one another and then froze in time because there was really no other material they could actually capture um, and um, essentially they could not really become any bigger. Now there's a video I made a few years ago where I actually tried to create our planet Earth using tiny planetesimals and by combining them into a larger piece and by essentially letting the uh, un uh, universe sandbox simulation play itself out, I was able to create something that's um, kind of similar to planet Earth and this in some way simulated this early creation of the uh, planets around the solar system. Now, what we know about uh, this particular period of time is that there were most likely lots and lots of these tiny rocks, tiny planetesimals, combining into larger rocks, and at some point um, creating larger and larger objects that would eventually end up being planets. Now, what we see with Ultima Thule is a kind of a snapshot of that past where two of these rocks actually did combine at a relatively slow speed, probably around five to six kilometers per hour. So it was actually a very slow sort of collision. And because there was nothing else to combine with, they remained this way for billions and billions of years. And so interestingly, what we are seeing here is literally a frozen image in time of a historical event that occurred several billion years ago. And we also don't seem to be uh, detecting that many uh, craters on the surface. There's actually only about 50 craters um, in total that are large enough to actually be detectable. And this suggests to us that this particular object may even have surface that's practically 4.5 billion years old. Surface that's completely untouched by anything that was only affected by the sunlight, but pretty much nothing else except for maybe some micrometeorite collisions. And this is actually a more realistic uh, color image of this particular object. And you can see that even in color, it's basically kind of like a brown looking snowman. And the color brown comes from the fact that um, when you expose organic materials to sunlight, they actually change color and become more brownish. And so we know that this object actually most likely has quite a lot of organic material on the surface which is why it's so much darker in color and uh, kind of resembles the dark organic um, brown spots on Pluto that we actually saw with the same mission three years ago. Now, this binary planetesimal unfortunately is very, very far and also very dark. As you can see, it's extremely cold pretty much everywhere on the surface. It's also not really spinning really fast um, and its spin is kind of unusual. It actually has this unusual spin pattern around the axis that you see here but it will actually take us pretty much about two years to get all of the data that New Horizons just collected by passing close to this object, simply because of the distances involved here. So we're not really going to see much more um, and hear much more for at least a few months now, because even the first image took about four hours to transmit. And considering the fact that uh, it takes about six hours to for signal to reach uh, from our planet Earth to the uh, New Horizons probe that you see right here. It's really, really far away. It's about a third of a distance of the Voyager probe and uh, obviously farther away than Pluto itself. So it will take us quite a while to learn what this particular probe saw. And if it did discover something unusual that we didn't expect, then we'll only probably hear about it in the next few months or so. However, since we discovered this object back in 2014, we actually had pretty much almost four years to 
um, quite extensively study this even before the probe got there. Uh, so what you may have not known before is that some of the most advanced uh, techniques were used to actually try to analyze the uh, area around this particular object by using several unusual telescopes, including SOFIA, that's essentially an airplane that has a telescope built in here, to try to um, look at this object and its occultations. Well, okay, what's an occultation? Essentially, when Ultima Thule passed in front of various objects, like for example stars, it casted a shadow on our planet. That shadow was absolutely minuscule, it's super super tiny and very very difficult to detect, but scientists uh, from across the world tried to detect it several times, and they did manage to catch it a few times, and this particular um, event was even um, responsible for creating quite a lot of excitement in various countries, including Senegal, where People were actually super excited to participate in this particular detection. But uh, by being able to actually see this sh tiny shadow uh, all the way from Earth at a distance of several billion kilometers, this allowed us to develop new techniques for studying these tiny objects. And most importantly, because we didn't really detect any other shadows, we we're almost certain that this object had no rings, no unusual objects orbiting around it, no moons, which essentially meant that we could actually pass by really close to it and not lose New Horizons uh, craft. Because if there was something like, for example, some sort of an asteroid field or even a ring, uh, the scientists would have to divert this particular mission and make the flyby much farther away. So the New Horizons mission actually had some of the most advanced observation techniques to date and was actually able to beat previous records and essentially developed some crazy identification techniques that will definitely be used from now on by uh, scientists around the world. And on top of that, there's still about 11 kilograms of fuel left inside the probe to potentially encounter yet another target and take photos of that target as well. Now, we still don't really know if there's anything else that's going to be intersecting with the trajectory of the probe, uh, because we haven't really found any other objects in this particular region. But uh, we know that when we were looking for Ultima Thule, it only took us about, well, a few months, and we actually found three potential objects. This one was the so-called PT-1, primary target one, and that there, were, there were actually two other targets that could have been chosen instead of this object. So if we actually decide to look for more objects in this region, we'll probably have an even farther encounter in the next few years. Although for now, NASA hasn't really talked about this and we still haven't decided if this mission is officially over or if it's going to continue and encounter yet another object even farther away. Now I'm sure with time we're going to discover some more incredible things just like we did with Pluto and we're going to possibly learn a lot more about the solar system from this mission. But before we finish this video, let's end this on a really interesting fact, kind of uh, related to a band called Queen, the one from the movie called Bohemian Rhapsody, the most popular rock band ever. Now in that band, uh, the lead guitarist, uh, Brian May, uh, was actually studying astrophysics and uh, unbeknownst to most people, he actually went back to school and did finish his PhD and was even part of the New Horizons mission. Now, he interestingly actually just released a new song and it's under the official Queen banner. As a matter of fact, you can actually listen to it on the official Queen uh, YouTube channel and the song is about the mission. It's called New Horizons and it has a really awesome, inspirational, yet at the same time scientifically accurate representation of the mission, pretty much summarizing the whole thing, but obviously with the rock tune playing in the background with pretty catchy lyrics. Unfortunately, I can't really play this because I'm sure Queen will actually copyright strike me, which would be kind of cool. Being copyright stricken by Queen is something that I probably should try one day, but not for this video. And in any case, do check it out. I'm posting the link for this song in the uh, link in the description below. It's totally awesome, it's definitely right on the spot there with some of the best uh, space songs ever. And most importantly, it came out just at the right time as the uh, New Horizons mission was passing Ultima Thule. Now hopefully in the next few years we'll hear more from Brian May um, about this particular mission and also about his uh, future career plans because what I really like about what he's doing is that he's actually combining both science and art. In his own words, he actually once said that he really loves how back in the Renaissance days, you didn't really have a differentiation between arts and science. It wasn't a completely sort of opposite spectrum of a single 
idea of knowledge and people seeking that knowledge. As a matter of fact, you could be both a scientist and an artist. And that's exactly what he's striving to be. I personally definitely agree with that uh, philosophy. I, I have never really been specifically science or specifically art. I've always tried to mix both, which is why I do make a lot of videos about science. Now, uh, hopefully one day I'll maybe even get to meet Brian May and possibly even talk to him a little bit more about uh, what he actually did for the mission and what his future goals are. But for now, just check out the video and definitely uh, check out his channel as well, because he does have his own channel. And on that note, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who loves learning about space and wants to know more about our universe and, of course, our planet and our solar system. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.